Hi, welcome back to my channel. We are going to do some math stuff today. Today, um, we're going to be doing equations and inequalities at the like the high school level. So um, for those of you who are like, hey, I remember, I remember doing this in a grade before. Absolutely. Absolutely, you did. Um, and it looks different ways in different um, grades. I just told my class that um, you've literally been solving equations um, since maybe first grade. And some of you are like, no, I haven't. And they, you have because you, your teacher or maybe your parent or maybe your classmate or your brother or sister asked a question like, hey, two plus what gives me seven? That's an equation. So um, so they feel very comfortable in this whole um, unit. Um, I just told my students that this could be a redemption unit. Redemption means that you can like definitely redeem your grade, meaning make it like save your grade if you want to say it like that. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> so jumpstart problem, oops, over here, over here. So it says evaluate the following expression for x is equal to three. Stop. Evaluate is not a confusing word. What word do you see? What word do you what word do you see in evaluate? Value. So they want you to find the value of value. this. Very good. Find the value of this thing. <clears throat> when x is three. Okay, so show each step of your work so you can view reveal it with your neighbor. We're not going to do that right now. So everyone do this right now. Take a second and do this. Take a second. So I'm going to pause the video. You guys are going to try this. This is a doing. Um, like imagine if I told you, hey, I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike. And then I'm you like try to get on the bike. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to be doing the writing here because I am the teacher. No, this is a doing. So I need you to do right now. So I'm going to pause it. You're going to do. And we'll come back. All right. So I, I already peeked at your work. Some of you have um, a lot of really good stuff written. If you don't, get it written. This is not the time to watch someone else do something. This is the time to actually get it done. Um, so what rules should we be following when we're doing this? What rules should we be following when we're doing this? What rules should we be following when we do this? What are the rules? Uh, distribution, kind of, but there's something, there's like, yeah, there, it's called the order of operation, PEMDAS, right? Remember this, PEMDAS? So parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, then addition and subtraction from left to right. So um, I see a couple people working out their work here. I even saw you putting it in the chat. Let me just find someone's work that makes the most sense. Um, yeah, I tend to like work that looks like this just because. So this so this person put two times three plus three plus four over eight. Then they said, oh, do the multiplication six plus three. And then you can kind of see what they're going to do next, right? So this is the very first step. Just plug it in. Just plug it in. You guys all see that? Plug it in. Um, and then we got six plus three. Uh, let's see. And then this person, I'm going to continue with this person. That six plus three is nine. So then we get four times nine, which is 36 plus four is 40. 40 divided by eight is five. So this, per this person saying, hey, my answer is five. My answer is five. And so I agree with you. Your answer is five. Good job. If you don't have this work written, get it done. So today, by the end of today, you will be able to solve multi-step linear equations using inverse operations. Inverse means to undo. Inverse means to undo. You should be able to answer these questions by the end. How does connecting the operations in an equation to an action in a story help me develop and justify my solution process for solving the equation? And how does the structure of an equation give me clues about how to solve it? Okay. So Elvira, the cafeteria manager, has just received a shipment of new trays with the school logo prominently displayed in the middle of each tray. After unloading four cartons of trays um, in the pizza line, she realizes that students are arriving for lunch and she'll have to wait until lunch is over before unloading the remaining cartons. New trays are very popular and in just a couple of minutes, 24 students have passed through the pizza line and are showing off the logo on uh, the school logo on the trays. 
So at this time, Elvira decides to divide the remaining trays in the pizza line into three equal groups. So she can also place some in the salad line and the sandwich line, hoping to attract students to the other lines. After doing so, she realized that each of the three serving line only have 12 new trays. That's not many trays for each line. I wonder how many trays there were in each carton I unloaded. Okay, everybody okay with that context? So in your brain, you should be like, first this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, okay? Um, so it says, help the cafeteria manager answer a question using the data in the story about each of the actions she took. Explain how you were arrived at the solution. So you're answering this question that she have, she, bleh, she ans asked. That's not many trays for each line. I wonder how many trays there were in each of the cartons I unloaded. Got it? All right. So I'm going to pause this right here. I'm going to expect that you guys go and figure out how to figure this out. I'm going to give you some time by yourself. I'm not sending you to groups right now um, just because I want to make sure that we get to the part that I need to get to. So number one, you're figuring out how to write this equation. So my first step is just going to go back to here and start reading the equation again. So I'm going to pause it so that you guys have time to do this work. All right. So we worked on this a little bit together. And the way we worked on it was first we wrote down the events. You guys told me that first she unpacks the cartons. I said, how many? You said four. And then 24 trays were used in the pizza line. And then 12 trays were, she put 12 trays in three different lines. I think sandwich, salad, and something else. I don't remember, soup maybe. And, um, and then she did that. And then the moment that this happened, when I wrote these three things down, so all of a sudden one of you all went, oh, it's 12 times three, and then plus 24, and then divide by four. Ms. Johnson, I don't even see divided by four. It's right here, unpacks four cartons because she asked how many, what did she say? How many were in each carton? So there you go. Um, most people don't like word problems, except for the fact that you live in the world where all you deal with is word problems, right? All you deal with is word problems. So be comfortable, just write out your facts, like throw out anything that is extra or unnecessary, and then you get your math coming out for you. So the answer that I would write is, um, and then I'm going to take a practice from, you know, back when you guys were in maybe like third, fourth, fifth, fifth sixth, seventh grade. You, I write my answer in a sentence to make sure that I actually answered the question. That's not how many tray. Oh, that's not how many trays for each line. I wonder how many trays there were in each of the cartons I unloaded. So then I'd say something like, "There were 15 trays in each of the cartons she unloaded." Do you see how that sentence makes sense and it answers the question? Boom, it's done. Um, for those of you who answer questions with one word, please, please draw out your words because the more words you have, that's where you'll catch yourself. So for those of you who stopped right here, you stopped at 60. Raise your hand if you stopped at 60. Yeah, yeah, guilty, exactly. It would have been a really funny sentence for you to say there were um, 60 to trays in total in each of the t cartons. She, um, wait, what? See? It doesn't make sense. So we always we always want to go back to the question that we asked. Yeah, right. So yes, for sure, reading is uh, is is key here. Okay, so let's just continue. So Elvira is interested in collecting data on how many students use use each table during lunch. She has recorded some data on sticky notes to analyze later. Here are the notes she recorded. Some students are sitting at the front table. I got distracted by an incident in the back of the lunchroom and forgot to record how many. Each of the students at the front table has been joined by a friend, doubling the number of students at the table. Four more students have just taken seats with the students at the front table. Do you guys all see what's happening here? It's like another one of those problems, right? Okay, continuing. The students at the front table separated into three equal sized groups and the two groups left leaving only one third of the students at the table. At the, as the lunch period ends, there are 12 students. There are still 12 students seated at the front table. Elvira is wondering how many students were sitting at the front of the table when she wrote down her first note. Unfortunately, she is not sure what order the middle three sticky notes were recorded in, in since they got stuck in random order. She is wondering if this matters. 
Okay. So um, you can think if these three, these three sticky notes. So let's see, where's my three? So this would be this one, the middle three, this one, each of the students doubled. Four more students have taken seats and the students at the front table separated. So those middle three, um, she wasn't sure and they just got stuck together in random order. She's wondering if this matters. Okay, so here's your question. Does it matter in which order the notes were recorded in? Determine how many students were originally sitting at the table based on the sequence of the notes that appears above. Then rearrange the middle three notes in different orders and determine what the new order implies about the number of seat students seated at the front table at the beginning. Does that make sense? So here's the first task. Your first task is to ignore, well, your first task is to say, hey, does it matter? Does it matter the order in which things happen. So can I take this one and move it as second and third and or so or fourth? Does it matter? And then it says, I want you to determine how many number of students were originally sitting at the table based on this order. Does that make sense? All right. So now this is your turn. We're going to read together and make sure that you guys got all this, but I'm going to pause again so that you have time to work on Okay, so we're going to write down the facts just like we did before, and we're going to write them down based on the order um, that they first gave us. Does that make sense? So what happened first? What happened first? So just the students are there, like the beginning students are there. Good. So some students are there. Good. Um, I, apparently, I want an extra L in there. I'm going to call this X. Some of them is going to be X. Okay. I'm going to put them over there. Okay. And then what happened? There was a fight, but then each, um, each student has a friend coming to the table. So the value doubled in total. Very X, good. X doubled. So X. Very good. So X doubled. X doubled. How, how do I write that in math? How do I write X doubled in math? Yeah, there's two ways. There's two ways to write it. It's either going to be two times X or just two X or X plus X. It just depends on how you see it. I don't care how you write it. Um, either way, they're equivalent. It's just how you think about what doubling is. I will say if you're more prone to X plus X, go towards 2X because um, 2X is kind of like your higher level, um, the way I'd want you to say it, okay? Then what happened? Yeah, and then four more students came. Someone said add four in the chat, awesome. So four more sat down and then so it's gonna be plus four but now i'm gonna go 2x plus four is everybody okay with that is everybody comfortable with my 2x plus four now some of you are like miss johnson should we put the x plus four in parentheses no because they didn't add four and then double because that's what that would mean right so let's continue. And then what happened? So we did that one. So we're on this one. Students at the front table separated into three equal sized groups. Divide by three. And then two groups left, leaving one third of the students at the table. So when I divide by three here, because you guys are going to say, oh, divide by three. The, um, split into three groups. Two groups left. Now, both of those are in the same place as this. Now it's gonna look like, oh, I can do this, aha. Uh -huh. I can go two, two X plus four divided by three. Now I don't need to subtract off the two groups. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't need to subtract off the two groups because that's exactly what's here. So imagine I take, 
you know, the number of students and I divide by three, when I divide by three, I'm only talking about one group. So I don't need to consider those two groups. Okay. Very good. Okay. What happened last? Let's see. At as the lunch period ends, there are still 12 students seated at the front table. What does that mean? How does that affect my equation? 12 students left at the table. Yeah, so I'm going to write over here. I'm going to copy the same thing. And I'm going to stick it right here. But... That's not what I wrote. So much divided by three. Okay, where do I put 12? Ah, the equation equals 12. Exactly. Equation equals 12. Done. Thank you to my helpers who helped me write this equation. Again, for those of you who are uncomfortable writing an equation, figure out which part of this equation did you not like. Did you not like doubling? Did you not like the idea that we added four? Did you not like the split into groups meant divide by three? Did you not like equal to, which part of this do you not like? That's the part that you need to focus on. Okay, then in order to go back and figure out X, then I just need to solve it. And so for solving, I'm gonna use my, my, my handy dandy notepad because that's just easier to write everything on. Let's see, what question are we on? No, it's right here. So here's our, our question. And I am going to pretend that I remember the equation off the top of my head. I think it was two parentheses x plus four divided by three equals to 12. I think that's right, right? Yes, what's your question? This is a shot in the dark and I'm probably wrong. My mind is running and I thought, could we do the opposite of what we did? Like, could we do the opposite of that equation? So let's say 12, we get our answer 12. So then we do 12 times three because we divided by three. So we do the opposite, which would mean inverse, like you explained and the inverse operations, we would do all of that. And that's how we would get our original answer. We work, we work from backwards to forwards and that would be inverse operations. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I like to call this in the reverse inverse order. I know, right? Both of you, but that's absolutely correct. So in the reverse inverse order, which is exactly what you guys did um, earlier, right? When we worked on that other problem with the cartons, where are we here? That's exactly what you did. You started at the end and then you worked your way backwards. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. That's actually why this comes after you learning how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and, and, and square things and work with parentheses, right? So um, when Ms. Johnson teaches this, Ms. Johnson uses the acronym SADMEP. Anybody recognize SADMEP? Anybody recognize SADMEP? Yeah, it's the reverse order of PEMDAS but now we're gonna take them in inverse order. So the way I like to describe this when you're solving an equation goes like this. Let's pretend I had a present for you. Yay, I have post-its for you. You're so excited, I know. So I take my post-its, I put them in a box, I close the box, I wrap the box, I give you the box. Everything that you're gonna do to find out what's in the box is what I did in reverse order, in inverse order. Reverse, inverse. Reverse, inverse. Reverse means the first thing I did is the last thing you do. And the last thing you do, well, no, the last thing that I did is the first thing that you take care of. So I take, I'm gonna say this again, I take my post-its, I put it in the box, I close the box, I wrap the box, I give you the box. The first thing you're gonna do is take the box, open the box, take it out, right? Everybody okay with that? So that's exactly what you're doing, except for now you're going in inverse order. So some people are, are already there, they're doing it. And there's several different ways that you can do this step right here, right? Some of you are seeing, oh, uh, what do I do here, Ms. Johnson? Some of you see this as multiplication. If you do, good job, you can divide by two. Some of you are like, oh, I don't like that, Ms. Johnson. Can I just um, distribute out and then do it? The answer is yes to both of you, right? The answer is yes to both of you. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter like how you get to Costco or Target, wherever you're going, as long as you get there, right? Some of you will take the freeway, some of you will take 
Firestone. I don't know. Whatever you do. So um, which way would most of you do next? Would you divide by two or do you distribute? What do you see? You distribute. Okay. So I'm just going to go with distribute because that's what someone told me to do. I'm going to do that. So then this is 2x plus 8 equals to 36. And then I'm still going on this sad map thing. Do you all see my subtraction and addition? And you're like, yeah. How do you undo addition 8? You guys all say, oh, subtract 8. This is just review. That's why I can go just a tad bit faster here. So we get 2x equals to, what is that? 28? 28. Everybody okay with that? And then divide by two, X is equal to 14. I think it's 14 students, okay? I think it's 14 students. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 14 and take it back over here and see if it works. For those of you who really want to get an A on this test, quiz, anything, you're going to take your, you're going to take the two seconds to take your answer and take it back over here and see if you still get the same answer. So let's work. It says, some students are sitting at the table. Um, it's not some, it's 14. 14 students are. And then each of them at the front table has been joined by a friend doubling their number. So now we have 28. And then four more students have just taken seats. So 28 plus four is 32. Um, did I do something wrong? I think I did something wrong. 32. And then it says, then the equal size groups... I did something wrong. Someone find my mistake. Look in the chat. I'm trying. I understand, but where did that answer come from? Did I copy the problem wrong? Two. I wrote it wrong. Why did no one tell me? Who saw me? Ah, oh, man. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Johnson. We all make mistakes. Word, word. That point pencils have erasers. This doesn't have an eraser. Just kidding. It does. Okay, I, po I apologize. So let me go over here. So we get 2x plus 8, ah, 4. This is why I always check if I copy correctly. All right, so we get 36. Oh my gosh, Ms. Johnson, 2x plus four. You know what I was thinking when I was right here? I was like, I thought I said not to put the plus four inside the parentheses, but then I didn't check. All right, 2x equals to 32, x equals to 16. Aren't you glad that I checked my answers? Aren't you glad? Like then I, I know you guys are like, oh, Ms. Johnson, did you do that on purpose? No, I like sincerely messed up. Ms. Johnson, she makes mistakes. Remember we talked about this? Okay, so um, I think my answer is 16 students. Um, so I can't even spell anymore, guys. Students, um, we're at the front table. And then I'm going to try this again. So 16 times 2 is 32 plus 4 gives me 36 divided by 3 is 12. I know so many people told me, so many people told me it was 16. Don't even. But then the whole time I was like, wait, but where do you see? Where do you get that? But then I didn't realize all right better than numbers than yes but i'm gonna tell you play with your equations to get better at them i promise all right again i apologize internet i apologize here you go uh, Ms. Johnson makes mistakes all the time. Okay. Oh, wait, we were supposed to do something different. Um, oh, did you guys say, what do you guys think? Does the order matter? Does order matter? Like, would it matter if um, four students added and then we doubled? Yes. It actually matters because look, Ms. Yes. Johnson, look, it's wrong. So this is the example of four students were added and then we doubled and then we split and in fact this is not um mathematically this answer is uh 14 2 is 56 divided by yeah so this is this is really funny so yeah so does 
does it is which thought, hun? Yeah. So X div so someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, would X divided by three work consistently? Kind of, as long as you think about this as the big X. If I'm understanding your question correctly, you're saying like this is just a big group of students and then we divide it by three and that's a third of the students. I think that's what you're asking. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Okay. So the answer is yes, it would come out differently if those if that order mattered. So here are three different equations that could be written based on a particular sequence of notes. This, 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 right? This is the one that we did wrong. This is the correct one, right? So examine each equation and then list the order of the five notes that it was represented. So I'm gonna pause right there. I'm gonna have you guys do this later. But I want you to think, just because we say plus four, do you see how many different plus fours we can possibly have? Does order matter? And then going back over here, we said, how does connecting the operations in an equation to an action in a story help me develop and justify my solution process for solving the equation? So this is really, really what we were trying to do here. So yes, this was another level up. I, I would be a little bit wary to, to show you this problem if you guys were you know, in eighth grade, just because of the levels um, that I was showing you. Um, I wanna show you our takeaways. I wanna pull our takeaways all together. So our takeaways, here we go. So today we use operations of ar arithmetic to represent actions in a story context. We use grouping symbols um, and order of operations to write an equation to model a story context, and then use the story context to help us justify a process for solving the equation. So in between there, that what they're not, what you did um, is, is they're just subtly saying, write an equation. Some of you didn't write an equation. You were still able to solve that equation or solve the problem, which is really strong, strong work, right? Really strong work. Um, I do want to say, um, I definitely, definitely want you to um, work on your writing equation skills because the more times you can write an equation, here, hold on a second, I'm looking for something and I can't find it. Um, the more you write your equations, the more comfortable you're gonna get at writing and solving equations, okay? And so word problems will not mystify you anymore. You will be able to solve them from beginning to end. It says, in general, we learned um, that when solving a, an equation, a linear equation, meaning a line, um, we undo operations in the equation by what? By what? What word did I use that um, Jonathan used as well? What word did we use? I just read some of your chat. Some of you were like, I told you. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, yes, inverse operations. So by using inverse operations. So this word, um, this word is really fancy, inverse. It just means to undo. Okay, so don't get all like, what's that word mean? What? Um, it just means to undo something. So if I told you guys, hey, can you, can you undo opening, um, that closet right there, you'd be like, you mean close it? I'd be like, yeah, I want you to undo it. So just think it's it it undoes whatever you did. So if you messy something up, you're gonna clean it up. If you turn on your computer, you're gonna turn it off. Um, basically undoing it, right? So the order of um, the order for applying inverse. Yes. Can you unmake my hamburger? See, I was thinking about that and I have a really good story that I told my, um, my, my, I'll tell, I'll tell you that in a second, but hold on. So the order for applying inverse operations is the reverse order where we talked about this. Everything that I do, you did, um, in reverse order, but everything I did, you undid. So in the inverse, so reverse inverse order. Very good. Let me just finish this off here. We can justify each step in the equation solving process by using properties of equality and properties of operations such as these. Now, I'm just going to like, I just, this is another reason why I like math because when I name something, it makes sense, right? Like if I said, hey, um, this is my Bluetooth speaker. You guys all see my Bluetooth speaker? This is my Bluetooth speaker. It's called a Bluetooth speaker because why? Why? 
Yes, it's a speaker that is that connects via Bluetooth. Does that make sense? Or um, this is my computer mouse, right? This is my computer. It's not a mouse. It looks like a mouse, right? But it's for my computer. So um, when we say distributive property, um, the word property means um, something that is true for that group of people, right? So the distributive property, you all know what that is. You remember, um, in case you don't, it looks like this, right? It looks like four parentheses X plus two is equal to 4x plus 8. Okay. What do you think the addition property of equality is? What do you think the addition property of equality is? Addition property of equality. When we what? What are we going to be doing? Someone say adding. Yes. When are we going to be adding? In an equation. Yes. So this, this pertains to this when I did this part here. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I, you can't see it because I just did this um, right here. I subtracted four from both sides, right? That's true because of the subtraction property of equality. The multiplication and the division property of equality. You guys have been using this, but now you know the names of why you use these, okay? All right, last couple ones here. So the inverse operation... Um, is something that undoes each other. Some inverse operations is addition and subtraction, multiplying and dividing, squaring, square rooting. Notice they taught you these in order. When you were in first grade, you knew all about addition and then they introduced subtraction, right? They always teach you the forwards and then they make you go backwards. Pretty classic in math. Multi-step equation just means that it's an equation that in order to solve it, there's many steps in order to get there but you have to follow those steps in order. Okay, properties of equality. This is our last one. So once you have an equation, there's legal things that you can do and not do, okay? So remember, I think it was probably your sixth or seventh grade teacher that said, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And that is always gonna be true in order to maintain the solution, okay? So really good job. Look, you're able to do this exit ticket. Look at this. Oh, we're going to talk about Elvira again. Let's read together. It says, Elvira discovers that one of her sticky notes has been stuck to her folder, and now she needs to put it with the others. It says, just before lunch ends, two students left the table. Two students left the table. Write and solve the equation that includes this additional sticky note. List the, stick, the six notes in the sequence that represent your equation. So you're just adding that this six sticky note to our list that was over here on slide eight, right? So right before here, this is where that sticky note would go, right? Maybe, okay. So now you are ready to do all that. Um, you should be really confident in feeling, in doing your exit ticket, you're ready, set, go, all of that.